And hello. How the hell are you doing? Yeah, it's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, I have been super... In fact, I think I was looking at the recordings on my... Uh, put that down a bit. It's a bit windy today. I was looking at the recordings on my phone. Hopefully, uh, speaking of phone and recording, hopefully this does come through okay. Uh, yeah, it's probably about a year, actually, since I did this. Yeah, whatever. So, I've been super, super busy. New job. Uh, new job has been super fucking busy this last couple of months. Uh, not last week, but like the week before last... Oh my god. Travellers convention up there. Hope the camera can see that. Jesus Christ. Fucking hell, mate. There's quite a few of them. There's a lot of horsies. There'll be a lot of shit on the road as well. Literally shit. Anyway, yeah, new job's been super busy. I've been working like 60, 70 hour weeks. It's been fucking crazy. So, fuck it. I'm going to go out and uh, have a bit of a chill. A uh, bit of a ride, bit of a chill. Thought I'd do a quick vid as well because screw it. I need to get over here. Yep, I need to go over. Uh, oh yeah, there's a lane closed up here after I come off this roundabout. What a pain in the arse. So, first thing to say, I guess, is that... Yeah, I'm good. Pass my fucking bike test. Both of them. Full class A. You penis! Unrestricted class A license. And I am obviously on a new bike. I'm not going to carry on rolling around on the... Oh my god, what is wrong with people? Come on. What the shit is all that coming off your car, mate? Jesus. Fucking red shit falling off your car. Come on, man. I think it's actually flower petals where he's been parked, but whatever. I don't fucking know that. It looks like bits of plastic or something to me. Anyway, yeah. I wasn't going to carry on rolling around on the CBF125 forever, so I am now on the Honda NC750X, which is it's actually my second 750X, but I'll get to that. Um, it's not exactly going to blow your balls off with super high revs and super high performance, but it's highly fuel efficient. You will still accelerate faster than pretty much everything else on the road. And it's a nice, simple bike to ride as the first... Uh, I think my camera is falling down here. As the first um, big bike I've ever ridden, it's, uh, it's a nice, simple bike to ride. I fucking love it. Wouldn't be without it. Let's get back over. Would not be without it. Fucking brilliant bike. Yeah, so the bike tests, they're an absolute twat. They really are. The Module 2 wasn't so bad because I've been riding for about a year or so. Um, there's a lot to bear in mind on the bike, um, especially during your test. Um, but the Module 1, Jesus titty fucking Christ! That was harsh. Let's just keep an eye on this guy over here. Are you going to pull out? Nope. Good. Good. You waited. Like a sensible driver. Yeah, there is so much. It's so tough. I mean, I guess you want the bike test to be difficult when once you pass your Class A license, Category A, Class A, Category A, I think. Once you pass your Category A and done your full direct access, full unrestricted access, you can go out and jump on a fucking two and a half, three litre Honda Goldwing. So I guess they've got to be tough. Uh, the tests have got to be tough. But I was absolutely bricking it. I was so close to failing the uh, Mod 1. I didn't get up to speed on the first U-turn uh, thing where you do the obstacle. I think it was when you do the obstacle avoidance, I can't remember. But, you know, you have to get up to 40 kph, was it? Or 50 kph? Uh, basically about 33, 34 miles an hour. Um, and I didn't get up to speed. And I heard the examiner say the dreaded words, Would you like to have another go? Uh, fuck yes, I would. If you're asking me that question, that means I done fucked up. So yes, I would like to have another go. Um, but aside from that, everything else was fine. Got up to speed on the next run, obviously, uh, because I passed. Um, so that was all good. Mod 2, I was absolutely shitting myself. But I had a zero fault run, which was fucking brilliant. 
came back in afterwards and the examiner was like well I got my instructor in as well the examiner was like so how did you think that went and I was like well if I have failed I know why I've failed um, because a couple of times uh, I was probably a bit close to parked cars I don't think I did shoulder checks well enough in time and he was like actually no there were no faults to pick up on um, although you might have been a bit close to some cars and the shoulder checks were a little bit late you still slowed down took appropriate actions we're going to slow him down uh, you still slowed down and took appropriate action um, and you made the shoulder checks which is the important thing um, and your shoulder checks were made in time sure they could have been a little bit lower but they were done which is the important part and I was like fucking what mate you are and the poor bugger who went after me, the poor woman who went after me, failed because she realised she was on the wrong lane on a roundabout and uh, switched lanes on the roundabout. Uh, I don't think she indicated properly. Um, but yeah, that wasn't good. She was in the wrong lane or something and came off on the wrong... Um, came off a roundabout from the wrong lane. I can't remember, but... Oh, absolutely gutted for her. So yeah, I came home uh, on my CBF125, still with his L plates on. And uh, the first thing I did was went and take the CBF125 down to my friendly local motorcycle dealer to swap it in for my first NC750X. I say first because that one, some motherfucker tried to steal it. Uh, I had a big shackle lock on the front wheel at the time. I didn't have it chained up to anything. It was locked up, obviously, but it wasn't chained up to anything. Um, but they didn't even bother trying to cut the lock off. Didn't even bother. Um, all they did was snap the steering lock and tilt that back a little bit they snapped the steering lock um, obviously must have realised it's got an immobiliser and I'm pulling quickly a little bit I shouldn't pull into the bus stop but it's a Sunday it's quiet I think my camera's uh, not right here let's just check that quickly yeah, it's tilted back a bit far. It's quite uh, far over on the side as well. I haven't really got the mounting points down on this bike yet, really. So it's kind of just wedged in there a little bit. So, you know, it does the job. You can still see. Uh, oh, warm. Looks clear. Yeah, we're good. So yeah, they snapped the steering lock, couldn't defeat the, immob the immobilizer, the ignition immobilizer, and uh, the motherfuckers just left it there, just left it lying down on the floor on my drive. You know, it is a big risk with a motorcycle, having it stolen because, you know, at the end of the day, people can just pick it up and chuck it in the back of a van. And that's what I was expecting to have happened. You know, if somebody's going to nick the bike, they're not going to fuck around with it on my driveway. They're just going to chuck it in a van and fucking go and deal with it later, you know. I was not expecting the inept thief. If they'd actually taken the bike, that would have been easier to accept. It wouldn't have been better, but it would have been easier to accept. And there's a Popo van up by there. Yeah, so if they'd actually taken it, no, that would have been easier to accept. So, okay, got the AA to take it down to uh, the dealer, for them to take a look at the repairs, see if it's going to be possible to repair the ignition barrel. And they said, basically, yeah, we can have it back on the road for 900 quid. New ignition barrel, new handlebar, new handlebar yoke, because they were all damaged as well. Obviously, though, you wouldn't have um, a working steering lock, um, and you'd end up having to have two sets of keys, one for the ignition and then one for the... Uh, for the uh, storage box and the fuel tank, uh, which wouldn't have been ideal. So, that would, you know, on the face of things, that's not too bad, except the fact that the bike was on PCP. Brand new three year PCP deal. God knows how that is going to affect the future value of the bike. So, I could have been left out of pocket. What I ended up having to do was get the insurance involved. And obviously, frame damage, that is an instant cat B right off. Here we go, speed up a bit now.
Come on, are you coming over? Penis. I should wave him really because he didn't he didn't actually cut me up. That looked like I was sticking my fingers up then, so I thought I'd give him another wave. Uh, whoops. I was not sticking my fingers up at you, mate. Uh, somebody else out to enjoy a sunny Sunday afternoon. Give them a little wave as well because I'm nice. So yeah, I got the insurance involved. Can't be right off. Yep, because obviously frame damage. Uh, replacing the frame is going to be about five thousand pound, which you know the value of the bike was five thousand eight hundred. So it's just fucking not worth it. Not worth it for them. So which was a total kick in the balls because the bike was two and a half weeks old. Two and a half weeks old when it got written off. Sorry about the wind noise, by the way. I'm still using my my trusty old shark helmet, which is not exactly very um, very quiet. But this helmet has seen me through a lot. So whatever. Yeah, so total, total dick punch that was. I ended up being without my bike for about three or four months while the insurance was fucking dragging their heels with it. I was so, so annoyed with it all. It was absolutely ridiculous. So the insurance didn't actually finish paying out. They didn't actually deal with the, finish dealing with the claim by the time I just had to go and get another bike. I mean, I had to because the transport arrangements I had were ridiculous. I was having to have the other half give me a lift back and forth. Um, and it just, it was a ridiculous situation. I needed a bike, I needed transport, I needed to be on the road. I had to do something. And I'll touch wood and all that lot, nobody's, uh, nobody's touched this one. I do have CCTV camera up there now, recording at all times. Well, actually I say at all times, it's, um, it's motion sensitive, it's uh, zone minder, controlled through zone minder, so... Oh, I hate these rumble strips. I know they're to make you aware of your speed and all that, but I hate them. I do like this nice stretch of road coming up here. I'm not sure how well you're going to see it on the camera. I'm still not keen on the idea of helmet cameras. Something about just strapping a camera to my helmet just still does not strike me as right. Now, the last time I did this road regularly, I was on my 125, and this stretch was a fucking nightmare getting up to speed. This is so much more pleasant. This is a much, much nicer experience now. And hopefully you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but this view when you come around the corner here. Oh my God. Absolutely. Look at that. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully I can still watch the road, but that is stunning. It's not as nice as some of the views I've seen around Wales. But oh my God. That's gorgeous. Look at it. Well, you can't look at it for that much longer because of trees. No, I did a tour of Wales. I went round, um, went round the coast uh, over the course of three days, two of which it fucking pissed down. Absolutely drenched both days. But and then the second day when it didn't rain, I was going through Snowdonia, so it was fucking freezing. But it was absolutely worth it. Some of those roads. Oh, fantastic fun and the views are just breathtaking absolutely stunning I've never seen anything like it and I've never realized Wales could look like that over we go it was absolutely incredible I mean I know Wales has got some fantastic countryside but you know you take that shit for granted you really do take that shit for granted. And it wasn't until I got up into the beacons and saw some of those roads, some of those views, 
I'd have to look it up um, and put the uh, put it up on screen. But there's one where you're coming down out of the beacons towards Bangor. Yeah, I want to say towards Bangor. Um, and you're winding down out of the beacons through down through valleys and oh, the road is just amazing. I'm gonna have to pull over again because my fucking camera has shaken itself loose and it's pointing at the floor. Can I do this now? Yeah. I shouldn't have done because I wasn't braking. Oh my god, what? Come on, man. What the hell? This road is 50. Why are we doing 35? Come on. Can't fucking overtake because there's too much traffic coming towards me. Ball ache, come on. I really need to scratch my nose. That's so irritating. Oh well, okay, we're, do we're doing 50 now, fine, fine. We're doing the speed of the road now. So I don't know how long the battery in my camera is gonna last, so I could end up just waffling on and talking and waffling and talking and waffling. Oh, I'm so glad you're turning off. Talking and waffling, talking and waffling while the camera is deed. Jesus, what is going on? Oh, come on, mate, wheelchair user notwithstanding. Yeah, next time I see a bus stop, I will pull over and check the battery on the camera. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good camera, this. It's a good camera. But um, one of the things I find really annoying about it is the file size limitation. Uh, it's a Firefly 7S. Yes, 7S. Fake GoPro. You know, a fake GoPro, basically. But the file system it supports is only FAT32, uh, which means a four gig file size limit. So every four gigs, it has to start a new recording. And that would be okay if the recording was seamless, if that transition was seamless. Like the next video picks up on, picks up from the f uh, last, yeah, the, st the video starts, the very first frame of the next video picks up exactly where the last frame was that would be great but it doesn't do that you get a few seconds delay while it switches over which is a real ball ache which you'll probably see in the video I do like this stretch I'm going out for a quick blast for half an hour to an hour or so today not going out for any crazy rides the last time I went out for a a bit of a ride I ended up going out to Carmarthen and back again which took me hours um, it's brilliant it's lovely but it's you know it took me hours oh it's so pretty down here it really is pretty listen mate Put your brakes on if you're coming into a reduced speed area and you're slowing down. Put your fucking brakes on, pal. Oh, here we go. Bus stop. Pop myself into neutral. Oh, that's third. That's not neutral. I 
still struggle to find fucking gears on a motorbike sometimes. Uh, sorry, struggle to find neutral, not gears, just neutral. Yep. Camera keeps dropping down, look. I'm trying to tilt it back. Let's just have a quick look at the battery. Hello. Uh, oh, we're okay, we're on about half power, two thirds power, so we're good. We're good to go. I was just about to start my engine again then. Ah, now. I made a mistake here. Should not have pulled over by there. I should have pulled over by there where I had a better view of the road behind me. Whoop. So all that time when I'm going, oh, look at this fucking scenery, man. Look how gorgeous this is. I hope you could actually see it. Uh, yeah. To be fair, it's quite pretty along here as well. It's quite leafy and uh, nice and green. And when we get out to Pony Pool, uh, we get a lovely road, the Havadronis Road. I keep calling it Havadronis. It's Havadronis. Havadronis. Not Havadronis. But, you know, people mangle things. Especially us in uh, down in South East Wales, because we're like half-arsed Welsh. Uh, we don't speak the language. Stay back, Mr. Audi. We don't speak... Most people around this part of Wales don't speak Welsh on a day-to-day -day basis, so you just mangle it. We have a rough, vague idea of how to pronounce Welsh, but we just fucking mangle it. Afternoon, fella. Big, big black bike. Not my cup of tea, but... Oh, helmet, mate. Get your helmet on. What the shit? Come on. Why are we braking? It's just gone to 60 miles an hour. Come on. National speed limit. Really winds me up, this does. Drive at the speed of the road. There's nothing in front of you. I could do a total dick move here and just blast past a lot of them, but I'm not going to that is a dick move and people are used to do it to me all the time down there there's no obstructions there's no traffic the conditions are good visibility is good so why in the shit are you not driving at 60 not wanting to is not good enough because you hold everybody else up behind you. Oh, this, this hill up here? This was another thing that used to make my little 125 choke. I would have to stick to third gear up here. Uh, coming up here, I would have to stick to third gear. Come on then. Speaking of dick moves, sorry, but I sense that you're going to be going very slowly. Yeah, I would be in like third gear tops, throttle all the way open, and I would be struggling to get past 40. As it stands on this bike, however, this bike, like I said earlier on in the video, this bike does not exactly have buckets of power. It's a 745cc engine. Um, and delivers 53 horsepower, which for a 750cc bike That's quite a small amount of horsepower There's a smash thing there like a squirrel or something however 
what this bike does deliver in bucket loads is torque the torque on this bike is brilliant I mean I can be doing 40 mile an hour in fifth gear and I can still accelerate up to 70 80 miles an hour from there it's insane it really is Another little afternoon out in. Love it, love it, love it, love it. We love it, love it, love it, love it, love it like this or something or whatever. And uh, national. See, that was fourth gear. I went from about 35 mile an hour to 60. In fourth gear. I love it. The torque is brilliant. I just twist the throttle and it goes. Doesn't matter what gear I'm in, what revs I'm doing, it just goes. Now you're not gonna get very fast on this thing, but you are still you can still go fast enough to have your license taken away. And more importantly, you can still go fast enough that the moment you have an accident, you would be a smear and you would be dead. The moment of impact, you would be dead. It's still fast enough for that. So, while it might not be some like 12,000, 13, 15,000 RPM screaming engine, I don't always understand the, uh, the attraction of doing those kind of speeds on public fucking roads. Come on, man, this isn't, this isn't the Nürburgring. This is fucking Pontypool. This isn't a track day. If you want to ride like that, take it to a fucking track day. It's just stupid. You know, I'm not saying that I always absolutely 100% stick to the speed limit. I never cruise along at 80 on a nice empty motorway, or maybe touch over that, but you know, I'm not exactly the perfect driver. But why would you want to be riding at 90, 100, 110 miles an hour or faster on public roads, man? Your reactions are not that good. Most people's reactions are not that good. You just... Uh, you don't have enough time to react in case of an accident, in case you need to slow down quickly. You, your brain cannot process it that quickly. This is why racetracks are nice big wide things with like highly specialized surfaces and lots of grip and rubber down from previous races and all that shit. Public roads are not your fucking racetrack. Speaking of which, I've been totally, totally addicted to dash cam videos on YouTube lately. It's shit man, some of the stuff you see people doing it's fucking terrifying. As, never mind as a biker, as just a road user. Some of the shit that you see people doing. Fuck me, man. And I'm hoping that I don't have to submit this camera footage today to any, uh, any uh, dash cam compilation clips. This motherfucker. Wibbly wobbly camera, I can see it bobbling. Yeah, sorry, this motherfucker, that fucking um, speed camera back there took me totally by surprise one time and I nearly blew through the damn thing doing 60 odd miles an hour. Whoopsie, right now, which way am I gonna go? I don't know. I think I'm gonna go straight over. Easy Tiger, this is a 50 road. Speaking of treating the fucking roads like a racetrack, yeah. 
There's me doing exactly that. I think I'm going to come up through Newport. That was a big scooter that guy is driving. I'm going to move over here. I want to be in the right-hand lane for the roundabout. And that slip lane is the worst slip lane ever. You've basically got about, I don't know, 20 yards to get through it before you've got to merge back in with a 50 mile an hour road and fucking hell, man. I probably had room to carry on going there, but let's not push my luck, shall we? You're going to push your luck, aren't you, Mr. B-Ma? Fucking hate people who do that. Don't give you enough fucking space on the roundabouts. Oh, I've got some lovely fly guts stuck to my visor now. Every now and then you just hear a dink, dink, as something else pings off the visor leaving me with smeared guts. It's gross. So anyway, um, enough rambling. What else have I been doing lately? Not an awful lot, to be quite honest. I've been working too fucking much. That's, that's honestly what I've been doing mostly. I've not really done much gaming stuff um, on YouTube or Twitch. I am starting to get back into Twitch, though. Um, I'm going to start doing that again uh, because... Ooh, new road layout. I want the A4042 here. New lanes on the roundabout. Handy. Oh, whoa. I was going way too fast there. That was dodgy. Yeah, I haven't really been doing much gaming stuff on YouTube or Twitch or anything like that. I'm starting to get back into the Twitch stuff because I find it um, a lot easier to do. There's a lot less setup, a lot less editing. Well, there is no editing. Basically, just start streaming and away you go. Stream of consciousness bullshit. Um, pretty much like I'm doing now, to be fair. Although, you know, I had to set up my camera and blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, I've said this like four times now. I'm going to start doing some game streaming again. Um, probably not on the YouTube stuff. A lot of the electronic stuff that I was doing, meh, that's not happening. I have, I do, still do have my hexacopter. I still do have that little project ongoing. But this is a problem with, this is my issue, is that I don't buy gadgets or toys. I buy projects. Like my drone, my hexacopter, that's not something I can just take out, fly it, and away you go. It's a project. It needs work, it needs effort, it needs to be built, it needs this, it needs that, it needs parts, it needs calibration, configuration, software setup, and uh, my life. Jesus. Rather than just buying like something like an, um, what are they called? A Mavic and just take it out to the field, set it up and away you go. Not so much with mine. For starters, I can't even take it out anywhere because it does not fit in the bike. It's a little bit big. Whereas an, um, uh, a Mavic Pro, I could get in the fucking storage bin between my legs here. In case that's uh, that's one of the things that I quite liked about the uh, 750X as well. If uh, in case you're not aware of this, this is another new road layout. What is going on here? Um, where the fuel tank normally lives on this bike, you have a big storage box. Which, to be fair, um, you can get like a weekend's worth of clothes in there. 
you're going away for a weekend on the bike somewhere you could easily get a weekend's worth of clothes in there I mean if it's if it's decent weather but yeah like a Mavic Pro I could just chuck in that storage box and uh, jobs are good and Oh, a lot of squeaky today, a lot of squeaky helmet noises, a lot of wind noises as well. It is kind of windy today. I don't know if you can see the trees going and shit. Oh my god. How slow do we just fucking go there? Ta-da, bus! I shouldn't take the piss, that bus. And that bus in particular, that route, was my lifeline for years. I used to catch that bus um, out to Newport and then from Newport out to the outskirts where I actually worked. I'm sorry to be a dick, Mr. Beamer. Actually, I'm not being a dick, I'm not going that fast, but I am going to pull in front of you. So, I hope you're still with me. I hope the, ca I hope the footage is still going. I hope we're, uh, we're still cameraing. In fact, we're going to pull over here and check. See? Neutral. Why can't I find neutral? Like that. <clears throat> oh, no, we're nearly dead. Battery's nearly dead. So, in that case, whoa, my storage bin was actually open. In that case, let's just get back out on the road. Yeah, so the camera's nearly dead. I better wrap this up, because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to finish the video properly, and it's just gonna end with me talking shit. Let me crack my visor down. There we go. Can hear me now, maybe. So yeah, let's wrap this up. Thank you for watching. If you have watched all this all the way through and followed along with my ranting and my gibbering and my nonsense, uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, so best bet is to check out my Twitch channel. Uh, I'll post the link in the description, I think, because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, I don't know how much... I might try and do, like, YouTube live streaming. I'm not too sure. Um, but primarily I'll stick to Twitch, I think. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'm going to press the button now. Oh, that smells nice. Or something like that.